The principle of rhythm. The principle of ry rhythm manifests that universal regular swing or time beat, which is apparent in all the manifested world, from its highest to its lowest manifestation. The ancient occult axiom, everything beats time, expresses this fundamental fact of the cosmos. Rhythm means regularly recurring motion, change, or impulse proceeding in time-measured, alternating sequence. The term alternating means succeeding, acting, or happening in turn. The term recurring means returning repeatedly, occurring at stated intervals, or according to some regular rule. Rhythm manifests in regular recurrence, succession in turn, repeated occurrence at st stated intervals, etc. The simplest and most typical example or illustration of rhythm is found in the swinging of the pendulum, the revolution of the earth on its axis and around the sun in regular measured time, the beating time of the metronome or the baton of the musical director, or the measured time in poetry or music. Rhythm means beating time in regular motion. In all rhythm there is recurring, recurring motion, change, and activity. Action or motion in opposite directions, alternations between the opposite poles of action or motion, and a regular interval of time between the alternating actions or motions. In all phenomena, change, or motion, there is to be always found the existence of two opposite extremes between which the rhythmic change or motion is manifested. Rhythmic change and motion proceed by alternating swings between these two extremes with a regular period of time elapsing between each beat swing or impulse in either direction. The period of time between the two alternating impulses constitutes the rhythmic rate, degree, or beat, its rhythmic measure of periodicity. The term periodicity, so often employed in connection with the subject of rhythm, means state of occurring or reoccurring at fixed intervals of time. Every phenomenon, no, every phenomenal thing manifests periodicity by reason of the presence and activity of the principle of rhythm. Every phenomena thing has its own rhythmic beat or measure of periodicity. All scientific investigation tends to corroborate the ancient occult axiom everything beats time. A leading scientist has said, rhythm is a necessary characteristic of all motion, given the coexistence everywhere of antagonistic forces, a postulate which is necessitated by our experience, and rhythm is a necessary corollary. All motion alternates, be it the motion of planets in their orbits, or ethereal corpuscles in their undulations, be it the cadence of speech, the cadence of, of speech, or the rise and fall of prices, it becomes manifest that this perpetual reversal of motion between limits is inevitable. The atoms in their vibrations manifest rhythm. The swing of the planets and the whirling of the earth manifest rhythm. The rise and fall of the tides manifest rhythm. The swing of the pendulum is interrupted rhythm. Completed rhythm is represented only by a completed revolution or circular movement. Uninterrupted rhythm always manifests as a complete movement in an orbit. But inasmuch as the center between the two extremes is itself moving in response to a higher order of rhythm, we see at last that all completed rhythm manifests as a spiral, a circular movement, which at the same time is moving forward. 
By the principle of rhythm, day is followed by night, and night by day. Summer and winter alternate in their appearance. Sleeping and waking alternate. Work and rest exchange places. Involution is followed by evolution, and evolution by involution. All changes proceed according to rhythmic order and sequence. The conduct of mankind is regulated by rhythm. Fashions in dress, in taste, and in feeling all come and go and come again. Everything comes back in time. Races rise and fall and then rise again, again to fall. The course of empire wins its way in cyclic procession around the earth. History repeats itself. Even our emotions have their title, Moments. A writer has said of an important fact concerning rhythm in our emotional states. Nothing swings beyond the limit of its extremes. Nothing can pass beyond its rhythmic limits. Consequently, if a thing swings far in one direction, it swings back equally far in the other. Its reaction is in the measure of its action, though in an, though in an opposite direction. If its swing is great, its, its extremes are widely apart. If the swing is small, then the extremes are close together. The pendulum illustration may be applied to the phenomena on all planes. A short beat of the metro metronome allows the rod to move only a short distance each way. The long beat admits of a wide swing. And in the same way, those who suffer keenly also enjoy keenly while those whose natures admit of but little suffering are also incapable of more than a limited capacity for enjoyment. A pig suffers little and enjoys but little, while, while a highly organized, sensitive individual suffers the torments of emotional and mental hell at, at times, while at others he mounts to the heavenly emotion and mental realms. The pendulum swings as far in one direction as in the other. In some of the higher teachings of the Rosicrucians, the student is instructed in the application of the principle of rhythm to the mastery of his emotional states and feelings. The essence of this secret teaching is that the wise, perceiving the inevitable reaction following action, the ebb tide following the high tide, manage to escape the consequences of the reaction by rising to their highest realm or planes of consciousness just before the time of the backward swing of the emotional pendulum, thus allowing the reactionary movement to be manifested only on their lower planes of consciousness, while the ego dwells serenely on the upper plane. A writer speaking along the lines just mentioned has said, The Master's taught that by an understanding of the principle of rhythm, man could escape many bewildering and perplexing changes in his emotional states and feelings. They call this the process of neutralization, the operations of which consisted of raising the ego above the vibrations of the ordinary conscious plane and on to the higher this was akin to rising above a thing and allowing the thing to pass beneath it. The occult masters and their advanced students polarized themselves at the positive pole of a particular emotional state, and by a process of refusing or denial, they managed to escape the effects of the swing of the emotional pendulum to the negative pole of that emotion. All individuals who have attained any degree of self-mastery really proceed in the same manner, though usually unconsciously, and without a true understanding of the law they are operating. By refusing to allow their negative mental and emotional states to manifest in them, they really neutralize them and cause them to pass under them on a lower plane of consciousness. The advanced occultist, however, proceeds consciously and deliberately <coughs> to this end and acquires a degree of balance, poise, and power almost incredible. The further the student penetrates in his investigations along the lines of the physical, the mental, or the spiritual, 
the more will he become convinced of the truth of the ancient occult axiom, everything beats time. The Principle of Cycles The principle of cycles manifests that universal, circular direction of prog process or progress, which is apparent in all the manifested world, from its highest to its lowest manifestation. The spirit of this principle was expressed in the ancient occult axiom, everything proceeds in circles. It is apparent to all careful thinkers and investigators that all progress or procession of things or events follows the path of the circle. All things, physical, mental, and spiritual, manifest the cyclic or circular trend. World and atoms, the cosmos and man, all are under this law. This principle is understood more clearly when we understand that a completed and uninterrupted manifestation of rhythm results in the completion of a circular movement. Therefore, the circular or cyclic trend of things is really closely allied to the principle of rhythm, and both rhythm and cyclicity are closely allied to the principle of vibration. The following interesting quotation from a writer on the subject serves to bring out some of the main points concerned in the consideration of the activities of this particular principle. Cyclicity is akin to rhythm and arise by reason of it. All events tend to move in cyclic trend in constant circular movement. The law of cyclicity manifest in the universal tendency of things to swing in circles. Cyclicity is the outgrowth or more complex form of rhythm. The primal manifestation of rhythm is action to and fro, a straight line or path, a movement backward and forward between two extremes or poles of action. This would be the invariable movement if the particular force manifested were the only manifestation of force or energy in that particular field of the cosmos. But when the swinging pendulum, free to move in any direction, is subjected to the conflicting attractions and repulsions of other manifestations of force and energy, then there is manifested the universal tendency toward the circular trend, the tendency to convert the straight line of the swing into a circular path or cycle. The action and reaction, the act, attraction and the repulsion arising from the conflict between the force of the rhythmic swing in a straight line on the one hand and the attractive and repellent forces from without on the other hand tend to swing the moving thing in a perfect circle around a central point, axis or pivotal center. And these conflicting forces are in operation through the cosmos, and the manifestation of cyclicity may be noticed on all planes. There is even the evidence of the cyclic trend of things and events, and the tendency to move in circles. The electrons in the atom move in circles, just as do the planets around the sun, and just as does the sun move around some other center in space. The highest occult teachings, as well as the highest speculations of science, inform us that there is always a movement in circles around some given point, and the movement of the said point or center of motion around some other center, and so on and on to infinity. The same writer continues, All events tend to move in cyclic trend, in constant circular movement, of continuous recurrence. The experience of man, aided by the reports of history, bears out this statement. The student of human history is struck by the continuous cyclic trend manifested throughout the ages of history. The student of philosophy is attracted by the same evidence in his own field. And so it is with every field of human thought. The cyclic trend is noticeable everywhere. Races and nations rise, flourish, decline, and fall, only to be succeeded by others traveling over the same lines. Westward, the star of empire takes its flight. 
the center of political power is constantly changing. The civilizations of Lemuria, Atlantis, Egypt, Chaldea, Rome, and Greece arose and passed away. Our own civilization civilization is but traveling over the same general lines. All forms of political, government, monarchic, autocratic, democratic, in all their variations were known in the past as in the present. The same law is observable in the history of philosophical thought. Philosophical theories popular in Greece over 2,000 years ago fell into disrepute, but are now again forcing their way to the front. The scientific theories of causation, continuity, determinism, and evolution were popular in ancient Greece over 2,000 years ago, and they were likewise popular in ancient Egypt and India centuries before that time. Fashions in literature, dress, and manner constantly recur traveling round and round their little circles, laugh as we may at the absurdity of fashions in dress. Nevertheless, it is proceeding according to cyclic law. Religious ideas are as old as the world. Pantheism, polytheism, monotheism, and atheism all have played their parts in, of fashion in religious thought over and over again and will play them again. The present-day revival of interest in the occult teachings arrives from the operations of the same law, and the law of individuals manifests the same trend and tendency. A little thought will convince you that the majority of people travel in circles throughout their entire life, the same old thing over and over again, recurring at intervals of greater or lesser duration, according to the nature and character of the person. Many people are like the squirrel who travels all day on his whirling wheel, always going but getting nowhere, ever ending just where he began. The thoughtful student, considering what has just been called to his attention, will naturally ask us how it is, if this be so, that there is any real progress at all. If, says he, there is nothing but a continuous running around in circles, a constant traveling around without getting anywhere, how is it that there is evident a real progress, a real evolution, a real advancement in the scale of life and being? The answer is simple. Given a circular movement around a given point, axis or center of attraction, and further, given an advancing movement of that center point or axis, it follows that the first circular movement will also be a spiral movement. In the central point, no, if the central point is advanced, then the circular movement is converted into a spiral movement, and while there persists a going round and round as before, each going round process travels on a little higher plane on, or a more advanced position. And this is just what exists in the cosmos, a cosmic spiral process onward and upward in advancing and rising circles. An old aphorism of an ancient school of occultism is, the only escape from cyclicity is by means of transmutation into spiral, spirality, by advancing the central point of motion. The conversion of the circle into the spiral is one of the highest forms of alchemy. And in this aphorism is found one of the secrets of Rosicrucianism. The rule operates on each and every plane of being, physical, mental, and spiritual. A writer has said, the ego may convert the circle of its life motion into an advancing and rising spiral, while, which, while carrying him around the life circle, will at the same time raise him a stage higher at each turn. The mountain of attainment around which winds the spiral path is traveled only in this way. Around and around the pilgrims travel, seemingly retracing their steps, but in reality constantly moving upward, mounting upward. By advancing the central point, by means of the will, the wise and the strong, convert the circles into spirals, and thus advance and attain. This indeed, as the old aphorism states, is one 
of the highest forms of mental alchemy. The further the student penetrates in his investigations along the lines of the physical, the mental, or the spiritual, the more will he become convinced of the truth of the ancient occult axiom that everything proceeds in circles.